All right, we're live on YouTube and live on Zoom. Hello and welcome. Welcome to everyone. Here we are at our last session of the Summer 2021 K-12 Teaching Academy. We are so glad you're here. Please take a moment um, to introduce yourself in the chat. Um, just make sure that it is addressed to all panelists and attendees so that everyone in our Zoom room can see um, your introduction. Welcome everyone to the Summer 2021 K-12 Teaching Academy, hosted by the Lurie College of Education here at San Jose State University. We will get started in just a few moments, but please do take a moment to introduce yourself in the chat and address it to all panelists and attendees. Welcome back, Don. Good to have you here. Oh, thank you so much, Diane. I'm so glad you were able to be here. Hi, Miss Endo. So glad to see you again. Always nice to see familiar names on that attendee list. I'm so glad to see. Hi, Armin. So see so many of you back again for another session. I really commend you on working through your summer just to add to your teacher tool bag and bring it back the best way possible for the kiddos in your class. Hello, Kate. All right, as everyone is saying hello in the chat, I will just go ahead and get started with just a few announcements. Um, just so you know, this um, presentation will be available after um, the presentation, the live presentation on the K-12 Academy website. And on that website, you can access any of the presentations that we've had as well. Um, captions are available in this webinar right here. If you go to the bottom of your Zoom screen and click on live transcript, it will provide captions for you. And um, there will also be captions on the recording. This is a traditional webinar, so we cannot see you or hear you, but we can chat with you. So please feel free to communicate with all the panelists as well as the other attendees in the chat. And then lastly, just a quick little plug for our Facebook group and our LinkedIn group. Thank you, Brian. There are the links right there for you in the chat. This is just a really great way to keep up on all the amazing opportunities um, that are available through the Lurie College of Education. So I highly recommend checking those out. I'm so glad to see so many of you in the chat. Excellent. Well, I am also very excited about our presentation this afternoon. The presentation title is Building Culture and Community One Story at a Time. And today we have with us Abby Almarito, who is a coordinator in the Workforce Development and Organizational Culture at the Santa Clara County Office of Education. Oof, I got it out. Abby, we are so excited to have you here today. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Becca and Brian in the background. Thanks for helping to facilitate today and welcome to all of our attendees here. And if you're going to see me later, hi, uh, you can't chat to me, but hello, I'm, I'm welcoming you. Um, 
I am gonna share my screen here so we can get started. So as Becca mentioned, this is um, building culture and community one story at a time. And so today we're really gonna focus in on some activities that you can do with your classmates or your classmates, your little classmates and your um, older classmates if you work with adults too, they work both ways. Um, I see we have all the way from, from kindergarten all the way through um, high school in the chat. So I'll, I'll try to make notes uh, to mention how we might adapt some of these for all grade levels. Um, but again, welcome. Uh, my handle is right there, Abby in Progress. If you are a Twitter person or an Instagram person, although on Instagram, it's mostly just food. So if you like food, you can, you can go there for that too. Um, but why? Why are we focusing today on stories telling in the classroom? Um, first of all, your kids really love to be seen. Um, there's a lot of research that shows that, you know, um, when students can see themselves in the classroom, that they learn better, they feel more connected, they feel more connected to their peers and to their, um, the adults in the space. Um, and secondly, and I see a um, an article there that I posted is about teens, but the whole world is feeling a tremendous amount of stress these days. And any way we can help to alleviate that by um, sharing who we are and asking our students to share who they are, particularly in this time of great trauma and great stress, um, you know, the more comfortable they're going to be in, in classrooms. I know a lot of you are probably or were probably back in person at the tail end of this year. And so got a little bit of a taste, but at the beginning of this school year, um, upcoming 21, 22, it's going to feel still very different and still very wild. Um, I, I feel like that's how I feel every time I step out of the, out of my house without a mask or with a mask that I'm entering a new world and a new society. And um, to some degree, your students are feeling that as well. And feeling it particularly today because it's so strange to not even be able to see any faces. Um, so I'm going to pretend that your faces are there smiling at me. Uh, if you have anything to add or to question, please do feel free to add it in the chat. In the chat, excuse me. Um, so how are we going to do this through storytelling? Uh, I want you to, as we are going through um, some of these activities, really see how are these um, prompts or activities helping you be present um, with your students and have your students be present with each other. Um, you know, the one topic that everyone understands the most about is themselves. And so anytime we can um, provide the opportunities for students to do that with us or our colleagues to do that with us um, and for us to be present with them, the stronger our ties are to them um, and the stronger we can create more collaborative bonds. You know, um, as much as it is about creating relationships and culture in a classroom, it's also about learning. So um, I forget who said it, but someone maybe not so famous said it, but the more people know each other, the better they learn together. And the more they laugh together, the better they work together, um, which brings me to joy. I hope that some of these activities spark some joy um, with the students that I've worked with and particularly, especially the adults. Um, I work mostly with adults these days. And then the third, the pink square there is visibility and value. I want you to take note of how um, the activities that are presented today help to bring more visibility to your students and their lives, their backgrounds, um, what they bring to your classroom. And then I actually just adjusted this today added the word value. Um, because when we feel seen in a space, we feel more valued. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to share what we know, share all of our great talents and our, our unique abilities, and then be appreciated for it. So um, would take note of how some of these stories can help to do that as well. Aha, what I haven't done is shared, well, no, thank you, Brian. Um, for three minutes ago, sharing the slides in the deck or in the chat so you can access them, follow along. You don't need to if you don't want to. So, um, because I can't see you, what I am going to at least do is ask you to share who you are through Jamboard. 
So in the chat, we're gonna start with um, who's in the room. So that link will bring you to this Jamboard. I'm gonna to toggle back over here to my slides just for a moment. So who's in the room um, is adapted from an organization called Equity in Action in California. They work with different other organizations to see and um, gather data around who's attending their conferences. And so they do a similar protocol at the beginning of the conferences that they work with. Um, so if I'd, I've adapted it, you know, any good teacher, beg, borrows and steals. Um, although I heard the other day it was um, lifting with love. I've lifted with love many times, and this is one of those uh, occasions. So in the jam board, which is in the chat, you will navigate to the second board and you're going to um, fill in the sentence frame. You'll start with, I am blank, um, and or my name is blank, and I am blank. So let's see if you're there. Oh, many of you are. We'll see some people have already populated. Mine is there in the blue. So my name is Abby. I'm Filipino. I'm a woman. I am, as of last Friday, a master's degree completer. Go me and all the other graduates for this year. Um, I am a baker also. I am a traveler. When things feel safer, I'll be traveling as often as I can. Um, a sister, friend, partner, reader. And so I invite you to share uh, pieces of you today. What's your name and who are you? Notice as you type in your uh, sticky note. Oh, by the way, if you haven't done Jamboard before, on the left hand side is a tool, uh, a tool menu. About four icons down is a sticky note. So if you click on that, um, and start typing and then hit save. Your sticky note will add to the board. Um, so, sorry, got distracted. Kate, over 100 degrees. That is really something. Tremendously hot. I'm on the East Coast right now and it is nothing but thunderstorms um, and humidity, which is not fun either. Uh, Anyway, back to who's in the room. Share the pieces of you that you feel are most present today. Um, we all wear many hats and hold many lenses um, in our lives. Uh, for me, I'm always Filipino and I'm always a woman. So I put that there all the time because that's something that I cannot escape. But some of these pieces um, are more present than others um, on some days and less present. So for instance, this is my favorite example. When my mom calls me for IT support because she needs to, or she needs some help setting up a, her Netflix or a printer or whatever other devices that she's happened to buy that day, um, then the piece of my identity that is very strong that day is daughter. Um, when I was in master's classes, um, that was a huge piece of my identity. So I would put in always reader and uh, writer and also a master student. So I'll have to also, excuse me, my larger screen is to my left, so I'm not, uh, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just looking at what's on the screen here. Uh, I'm seeing the chat. Thanks, Melissa and Luz for the congratulations. I'm seeing a lot of um, sticky notes pop up. If you're finished, go ahead and peruse what's um, written. So we have um, some Chicanex participants today, Filipino first generation, um, have some, lots of teachers, excellent. Um, so you can see just by, I mean, you're all pretty strangers to me, um, but if you have a classroom of students and you do this frequently, you can see and learn so much about your students in such a short amount of time. Um, of course, we're virtual and you're going to be in person. The virtual piece is still available to you because thankfully most students are, most districts have set up their students for Chromebooks or the like. Um, but you can certainly do this um, analog with actual post-its and have people walk, up, walk around the room or uh, walk around a board. Um, but already I've learned so much, even though I've never seen most of your faces. So imagine all the things that you can learn about your colleagues um, or your students that they're offering up to you. Um, 
I really do prefer this kind of um, open-ended question. There's a lot of, of course, there are a lot of great questions that you can start your class with different prompts, um, asking of different favorite things or uh, what they did over the summer or what they did over the weekend um, or hobbies. But this really allows students uh, and colleagues to choose what they share about themselves um, and to what degree. So, you know, I've done this before in different spaces and you know, literally someone will just say, hi, my name is, um, making up a name, Matt, and I'm a person. You know, that person didn't necessarily feel comfortable sharing or wanting to share anything that day, uh, and that's okay. And then there are other people who put in little essays um, to share a little bit more about themselves. Uh, we will definitely go back to that though. So thank you for sharing what you have. I look forward to perusing this even more and seeing who else, um, who exactly is in the room with me today. So that reminds me though, that um, when I say story, there's a lot of different interpretations for story. Um, right here in our Jamboard, these are all different stories. They're just abbreviated. Um, if we're in a classroom and I've done this for about five minutes, I can talk to um, or connect with um, my students one-on-one -on -one or large group or small group, or I can connect people individually and say, oh, look, Joanne, who's a fifth grade teacher, enjoys music and Disney. I love Disney too. We can connect on that and I can have um, different conversations with her about her experiences at Disneyland, when's the last time she's been, me, not since 2019. Oh my gosh, it's been too long. Um, and then I can kind of suss out even more stories based on what's on um, each of these post-its. So we're thinking expansively, I'm not just asking for writing prompts and having people, uh, having my students or my colleagues write stories about themselves, but I'm looking for opportunities to uplift stories um, from their lives and their lives and their experiences. Okay. So that's one. Second, um, it's another uh, activity that I might do at a class opener or a, a workshop opener or at a team meeting if you work with adults. So what's your walk-up song? If you are not a um, baseball fan, a walk-up song, and I'm not sure if other sports do this, but typically a walk-up song is um, associated with baseball games. If you catch a baseball game or a little bit of one, you'll notice every time a batter comes up, a different song is played. And so really we're looking for understanding what kind of different personalities we have in the space. So um, you could change it. Could be what's a song that's giving you just really great vibes these days. Um, I love most things Lizzo. So that's, I'll choose a Lizzo song or um, you can get even more specific. What song reminds you of home? Um, I'm also from San Jose, California. Um, and in I just high school, songs from Third Eye Blind really reminded me of high school and home. Um, so I might choose one of those. So I'm gonna invite you to, in the chat, remember the panelists and attendees, share a song that is either giving you good vibes, is your walk-up song, or um, reminds you of home. Thanks, Armin. T-Swift fan. Ah, me too. Shake it off is something that I, I definitely play when um, I just need to move, which is a lot these days. Rocking on Sunshine. Thanks, Don. Another great energizing song. I'm not heard a griff, so I'll have to look into that. E6. Wow, that takes me back, Melissa. Tower of Power. So as you can see, um, or experience, I don't know all of the songs. Uh, likely you're not gonna know all the songs that your students uh, might put in a chat or elsewhere, uh, but it does give opportunity to have more conversations. I can talk to Melissa about, oh, well, why? Why does um, Inside Out remind you of college? And, and who's your best friend? And 
Um, what's the significance there? Oh, Titanium, what a great song. Yellow, Coldplay, thanks, Gay. Um, <clears throat> Gay, Yellow was the song that my uh, family's Eagle puppy really loved. And I would sit on the ground, um, crisscross applesauce, and he would be in the middle there and just fall asleep as I played Yellow. Um, so as you can see, there's lots of different ways to um, experience people through music, um, gather more stories. As I mentioned before, this just provides another quick and easy opportunity to connect with your students on songs that you might know and songs you don't know. For instance, I don't know what work that by MJB is. Um, so I might, uh, if I wanna have some one-on-one -on -one time with Chris, pull that song up. Spotify has all of the songs um, these days and have him talk to me about it. You know, what's so great about it? Or we can just sit and listen to it. Um, the one thing I will say though, is once I've collected the songs for the collection of people that I'm with for that day, um, my favorite thing to do is to put in a playlist. So with students, I'll put on a playlist. It might be um, music that I play during independent work time or just at recess time on the playground or um, any time really. Um, I encourage you to think of, you know, this is just one question for right now that we're using for this moment to understand a little bit more about each other, but how can you use these as nuggets of information about your students that you can um, bring back later on throughout the school year or students or colleagues, right? Um, I think it's really exciting for a colleague to hear their favorite song that they've chosen and um, it's, all, it's a little bit of reciprocation, right? Like you ask them to provide a piece of you and then um, you give back to them a little later on by remembering that piece uh, and saying, oh, here, I remember you really love that song, Sunflower by Post Malone, and, and I'm going to put it into a staff meeting or a workshop, or um, I'll just play it during our collaborative time. Um, so that's another opportunity. I said, well, I don't know if I've said this, but, you know, these aren't really necessarily for academic purposes, but for sure you can then say, okay, well, um, this is uh, your favorite song, diagram it, or you know, whatever is appropriate for your grade, grade band. Um, I know we have some science teachers in the room. Okay, well, if this was your favorite song, what kind of chemical reaction would it look like? Um, there's tons of ways to tie music to art and to um, academics as well. Oh. Awesome. Thanks, Becca. Joanne already has that going on in her classroom. Students chose the music. Perfect. I know a lot of teachers use music as musical cues as well. They pick a song that might mean it's time to clean up or it's time to, um, you know, write your homework down. And so that's another option there too. Next, we are just rolling. It's another similar prompt. Um, this one takes a little bit of time. I've done this a few times and um, people either really love it or they get frustrated with me because they can't come up with the exact perfect answer that they want. Um, but here it is. You can ask them, who plays you in a movie? Um, I think it's really interesting when students get to do some freedom dreaming. They get to think of like, oh, some amazing things. It used to be, what would you do with a million dollars? Of course, San Jose. Uh, you can't even buy a house for a million dollars. You've got to up it to a billion dollars. What would you do with a billion dollars? Um, so who plays you in a movie? What's your character's catchphrase? Um, my catchphrase these days is whenever I hear something just totally outlandish, which is a lot these days, especially if I'm watching the news, is that is just so wild. So that's what my character would say in a biopic about me. Um, you can ask them about the title of the movie, who plays your best friend. Um, again, what's the theme song? So the connection here, just like last time, uh, I made, you can make um, playlists. Here, you can also make movie posters. So I did this with some colleagues and this is a colleague's movie poster that I created. Her catchphrase was, is it though? Uh, and of course, as you can see, she uh, said, her, the person who would play her in the movie is Melissa McCarthy. Um, so just a little bit of a tip 
Um, you can, of course, do this off of a Google slide, but Canva actually has um, Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Uh, okay, how about I get to the chat here? Canva. Um, there's a free version that you can use, and it has movie uh, movie poster templates that either you or better yet, your students can log in and actually uh, make their own movie posters or better yet, a movie poster for someone else. Um, so I think this is the other reciprocal piece of it. So the more we learn about each other, the more we can use it in our own learning and in our own products. So if I, I could partner up with um, Joanne and we could share our answers to the, not this slide, um, to these questions, and then each of us could make a movie poster for the other person. I can't believe it's almost halfway through. Okay, I'm just going to keep going. Here's another great activity that I really do love to do in person. Um, to be honest, it works better with um, older kids because they do have their own cell phones, um, but it can be adapted for younger students as well. It's a camera roll, so Students would pull out their phones, um, if that's permitted, hopefully. Um, they would choose a picture that represented something. So here I've chosen the theme change. Um, choose a picture that reminds you of change. And you just keep that very open-ended, however your student or your colleague interprets that. And then in pairs or in small groups, just share the picture. What I really love about this um, is that it allows people to share what they're comfortable sharing, but also actual remnants of their lives. Um, often we ask students to share things about themselves that, um, I don't know, feel a little surface. Um, what's your favorite ice cream? What's your favorite meal? What is your favorite sports team? And then we don't ever go any farther or further with those questions. And so this actually asks them to take uh, an artifact of their lives, a picture, and share it with someone. And usually people choose things that are personal to them. They might share a picture of their family or something that they're proud about. Um, you'll see on the screen this picture, I was just scrolling through my own camera roll. Um, this picture reminded me of change because um, every year, starting about three years ago, I decided to change how I did my birthday. And I would take a day off every single year around my birthday and do whatever I wanted. Um, it's usually days before my birthday. So here I am at a restaurant of my choosing. I get to eat whatever I want. I'm relaxing. It's the middle of a work day because I've taken the day off and I'm um, taking the opportunity to read with uh, something that is my own leisure reading and not um, something that is assigned to me. And so it's, um, a change in that is my birthday and it's a change in my practice. So no matter what, every birthday, I'm happy and excited because I've done exactly what I've wanted. Um, so that is representing change for me. Um, looking at the chat here, Pam says, during our Google Meets, I always posted a morning question asking kids to respond to their favorite something. Um, perfect. What's the extension question in that? It could easily as be, what's your favorite something? Tell us why. What's a memory that's associated? What's a person associated with it? Um, we wanna get to the nuggets of who people are and what, what they bring into the classroom or the workspace. Um, what's great about this activity is that now you know um, a little bit more about me. Um, if we were live, I, you could share a little bit more about you. Uh, and then later on in the day, if we cross paths, I already have a nugget about you that I can connect you, connect with you about. Um, you can ask me about, oh, well, how's the sympathizer going? Or oh, what's actually in that plate? Or what'd you do for your birthday last year? Because there's a story attached to, the, to the, um, the picture that I've shared. And there's a story attached to the picture that you've shared. And we're sharing our lives in a way that goes beyond kind of these surface things. Um, and it, it can lead to really authentic questions of, and interest in another person. Oh, I love that, Joanne. Um, asking kids to suggest their own questions. 
um, of course, any way that they can shape what's happening in the classroom, I think gives them so much excitement and value in that space. So thank you for that. Keep coming with these suggestions and um, things that you're doing with the classroom. Okay, this is gonna be really quick. Um, this is, I can talk about. Um, another component of some of these activities that I'm asking you to consider are that uh, they're short. I think something that's really daunting about building community that that, that feels very large. Um, when really, if you think about the relationships that you have that are important and valuable or the ones that you've recently started, that the relationships build over time. They're, they're building over minutes and moments. And so how can you think about and frame community building and cultural building so that you're doing it incremental, incrementally every single day in short bites? Um, you have 180 days with them. There's no reason why culture and community have to happen only in those first weeks. Um, so these are really short. So I'll explain this one I can talk about. You just partner up with someone and then you round robin. I'll say I can talk about um, the Red Sox. And if I'm partnered up with um, Melissa, she can say I can talk about birds. And then we just keep going back and forth about the things that we can talk about. Just quick, two minutes. Um, two minutes, or if we've run out of our list, then I can actually ask questions about what all those things that uh, my partner said they can talk about. And then I have this running index of topics that um, are interesting to someone else. And I've also shared those interests about me. So can't do that. Just moving on. Similarly, these are very short. Other activities that you can do at the beginning of a class period or at the beginning of staff meeting or workshop. These are very similar. Um, they're uh, meant to just give another opportunity for your students or colleagues to share about themselves. Um, if you really knew me, so we're getting to uh, understanding what's happening behind the surface of people. So if you really knew me, you uh, would know that last February, I got engaged and we spent the last, not last, last, last February, last, last February, the last 16 months, not planning a wedding, which is very fun. It's fun to be engaged. Um, so that's my, if you really knew me. So uh, headlines, this is, you know, again, the academics is not the primary part of this. It's the secondary part, but you know, why not have them develop some writing skills along the way? Um, a headline, or if you want to update it, um, a Twitter post, or if you want to update it even more, um, uh, I don't know, TikTok is all video, but you could say TikTok headline. Create a headline describing something happening in your life right now. So this asks students to just share a little snippet of what's happening in a short, brief, and succinct way. I think those would all mean the same thing, but you get what I'm saying. So my headline for today would mean, um, would say, I've been in here on the East Coast for seven days and had ice cream three days. So you can exactly understand what kind of life I'm living right now. Um, so you could even do this as part of a homework assignment, but at the end of um, a homework assignment so that the next day they're not thinking about it, they have it already prepped and loaded and they just share. So that's another application of that too. So I'll also think about how you can extend their thinking around some of these pieces. Um, it, when we share about ourselves, we often wanna share about the most exciting thing or the most interesting thing or um, something that, you know, we wanna spend some time thinking about how we might share it. So of course you can do it on the fly if you can give them some think time, even better. Okay, um, a session about culture from someone from the Santa Clara County Office of Ed would not be complete without mentioning my name, my identity. Um, so my name, my identity is a little bit of a lengthier, um, story building process. It's asking students to think about a name story, any name story. Um, like most of the prompts that you've seen in the past few slides, pretty open-ended. Um, so you can start with, 
what's my name story, uh, my suggestion is that you give them a few other prompts to get their mind thinking about different ways that we've viewed names in the past. Um, so you can see the different prompts on the screen. You're right, Armin, it's a great way to get to know your class and a great way to understand how your students' names are pronounced. Of course, my name identity comes from the Santa Clara County Office of Ed. It is an initiative to pronounce every single student's name um, correctly. It is usually the first thing that you learn about a student and it is something that sticks with them for most of their lives, if not all of their lives. Um, and it's something for many people, if not all, an important part of them. So it's really important that we as the adults in this space um, give honor to it and pronounce their names as they want it uh, and correctly. So there's a link in the, in the slides that will take you to more resources. There's actually a group of people who are creating lessons around my name identity, um, TK through high school. So you can see some lessons and resources there at the link. Um, so that's another really great prompt that doesn't, I'll, I'll give you, you know, another tidbit about these. These don't take a ton of um, prep time, right? So I think another kind of hesitation to building um, or paying attention to culture building in classroom is I just don't have any time. I don't have any time to prepare things. Um, so here, beg, baller, beg, borrow, steal, you can have all of these activities. Um, so my example is my full name, although I go by Abby these days is Abigail. Um, it is not spelled the traditional sense like Abigail Adams with the A-I-L at the end. It's spelled instead with an A-L and an E. That is because um, it is a combination of my, my last name, which is Almerito, the A-L, and my mom's main name, Ichaliko. So my parents were quirky and fun that way. So that's just one story about, and there are many um, that I can share over the course of the year and your students can share with each other over the course of the year. Uh, but I do have a question for you. So this is a really simple one, just in the chat. It's a yes or no question, really fast. Has your name ever been mispronounced? Jeez, not even a no in there. Even if there was um, a no, that's okay. The point is, look, yes, everyone's name has been mispronounced. Um, and um, the point there is, so this question is fairly, um, well, I don't wanna say it's fairly tame or it is insignificant or small. It really isn't. Um, you know, it doesn't feel good for people to uh, mispronounce your name. Uh, but the point here is beyond, let's say everyone's name correctly when we can, is that um, for all of these prompts, um, I need to take a step back and look at the question and the students that you're asking it of or the, um, the community you're asking it of. So all of you said that your name was mispronounced. Um, and so possibly, potentially, there's a story behind um, the mispronunciation that is painful to you. So I said at the beginning of this that these activities are meaning to spark joy, but it also means that we uh, need to build some awareness around when some questions may not spark joy. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't ask the question. Truly, um, when I've been in spaces when we're talking about our names and we share these uh, kind of hard stories and experiences about them, there's a, a connection that is made that is, um, is different from connections that are made in jest or in joy. When we feel each other's pain with each other and we can commiserate or we can connect across um, different experiences through pain or through joy, then the connection and the community starts to build in very special ways. Um, but that does mean that when we present the prompt and when we ask our students to consider these things, um, that we build in some sensitivity to it, that we have an awareness that when we ask the question and we see a student um, divert their eyes or they're just you know, looking down or they start to get irritated, that maybe the question that we've asked 
has triggered some experience or memory or emotion that, um, you know, you, you couldn't have foreseen or you didn't foresee. And so I think it just takes a little bit of awareness. Again, it doesn't mean that you don't necessarily ask the question. Um, I think the purpose of these prompts really is to provide opportunities for students to um, share more of themselves, but that there's some awareness. And maybe you don't start with the question that you think might, um, might bring up some sensitivities for your students. So maybe I don't do this question day one with my students. Maybe I start with the music question or um, the movie question, something that feels a little lighter and a little less risky. Moving on, aha, I remember why I put this slide in. So um, as I mentioned in the past um, few slides, you know, every time we're giving these opportunities uh, for students to share about themselves, they are nuggets and they're special. So we don't just take our special nuggets and we take it for one day and then we forget about them, we revisit. Um, that can be done in a number of different ways. Of course, there's lots of great writing prompts that you can use for any of these activities or questions. Um, conversations, of course, are um, richer because we know more about each other that is more specific. Um, but I just wanted to call out that there's opportunity for very specific questions. So today, um, I'm going to ask you to consider what you wrote on the post-it or not. Um, putting it back into the chat. If you haven't done Jamboard, Jamboard, I've navigated to the third Jamboard, which you can see at the top middle, um, there are two arrows going left and right. So if you're on the first Jamboard, you'll navigate to over to the third. So I'd love for you to share, um, again, on a sticky note, what something, you can choose all or one of them, What's something your colleagues should know about you that they may not know currently? Um, many of my colleagues do not yet know that I'm on the East Coast until we visit with each other on Zoom. Um, so that's something. What is a misconception people have about you? Uh, a misconception people have about me um, often will, um, revolves around um, what I can do physically. So you cannot see all of me, but I'm an overweight person, have been most of my life. Um, and I have run five half marathons and this morning just ran two miles. So that's something that people have misconceptions about, that I'm a runner and I'm also overweight and I look this way. Um, what's a strength, skill, talent that you have that is not typically associated with your current role? I'm really good at graphic design. Um, so that has nothing to do with what I do now, um, but I'll leave it up to you. Add a post-it to answer any one of these questions. Already with the first post-it, I'm learning so much about the person who posted it. I don't know who it is, but this person uh, speaks Mandarin. Um, with his or her mom, uh, and then also took a note to say that he or she or they grew up in Texas. So there's a, um, a seeming disconnect between people who are within text who are from Texas um, or grew up there um, and who might speak another language. So it's something that might be surprising. So someone's first year of teaching high school that's amazing. You will not find me in a high school class. I was definitely made for elementary. I substituted in high school um, and they, they were very keen. They knew I did not belong there. Um, so already we, we're learning quite a bit about the people who have posted. Um, the point here really is to keep understanding more of who people are not just what we see and not just what we assume about them. Um, whew, uh, an anonymous walrus um, writes that I must be an extrovert or I must feel comfortable presenting because I'm a teacher. 
whoever wrote that, you're speaking my language. I just, 15 minutes before you all joined, shared with Brian and Becca that I've done these presentations dozens of time and each times and each time I'm getting ready to present, I just feel this ball of nerves. Oof. I was on a swim team for eight years from fourth grade through high school. I bet you have just the strongest shoulders. Someone plays competitive trivia. Um, so you can see that for the most part, um, what you see on the post-its are things that are not readily visible when you see your colleagues or your students. So there's a world of knowledge, skills, talents, experiences that your students and your colleagues bring to your spaces every day that you just don't see. And that represents the vast majority of who they are. Oh, someone performed and sang in high school and college. That's a beautiful talent. Someone has a learning disability, auditory processing. Um, so you can see that we're learning quite a bit of different layers. Um, again, I've only asked people to share what they feel most comfortable in sharing. Um, and that's key. We don't want to force anyone to share anything that they're not comfortable in sharing. Um, of course, again, I wouldn't start with these questions day one. You need to build a little bit of um, community and cultural muscle within your spaces. Uh, but I, you know, would like to just share some appreciation at this moment for those of you who have shared something that is deeply personal um, in here. Let's see. Oh, we have some agreement. Someone wants to do everything perfectly. And I'm sure there are others in this space here who agree or who feel similarly. Pam says she wishes her principal would do some team building activities like this. Pam and all of you listening, many of your principals probably would love it if you would just come to them and say, can we do this? So there's my suggestion. If the person who is leading these spaces isn't doing them, doesn't hurt to ask, can we do something? Can I lead something with the staff? Five minutes, um, try that with your students first or other, you know, another space and then lead it in your staff. And then hopefully your principal will open up to some of these pieces. I can do an official baseball score book. Well, I've seen some, some people who are doing that during uh, baseball games. It looks totally intense and something my brain doesn't follow, but that's amazing. I wish I had time to read all of the pieces that you've written today, but again, appreciation for sharing um, what, what you have shared today so far. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my slides here um, because this is really important. You'll see on the screen, um, Iceberg. Iceberg has been a metaphor for lots of different things, but it, it means um, very similarly here. What we see of a person is just the very tip of their iceberg, and there's so many things underneath or behind um, the visible piece that, you know, um, some of it is painful, some of it is joyful, and some, like, some of it is just super interesting. And if we don't take the time to really give those opportunities for people to share about themselves, um, what they want to uplift about themselves, then we're missing out on um, so much of who people are. I do want to say that this particular iceberg um, metaphor is around culture. So if you think about um, culture as in where, who you are ethnically, where you come from um, geographically, like your family life, uh, all of the different ecosystems that you belong to that uh, have influenced who you are as a person and who that influence how your students are as people, um, you'll note that the things that are visible are on the top. So you'll see things like dance, the arts and crafts, um, the food of a culture is very visible. Um, for some, it is different um, physical features that might feel uh, very physically just uh, evident about a person that you can see and you can say, oh, okay, well, um, I can tell that, um, in trouble here because 
anyway. Um, whew. Skip that. Um, but the above the water things are the very uh, surface things. And then there's all of these pieces about us from our culture and ecosystems that are underneath that influence who we are. Um, and they interact with everyone else in our spaces, with our students, with our students' families, with our own families. Um, and in some cases can create lots of harmony and connection um, across difference and in um, similarities. So you can connect around things that are similar around your favorite music or um, different games that you play or around your work ethic. Um, or you can find connections across differences of those. And sometimes they create tension or conflict. Um, one of my favorite examples is um, being on time. So that is something that is really specific to a person. To me, being on time means that we have left 15 minutes early to be there um, or that we have left so that we can be there 15 minutes early. I was always the person in college to get there, to pick my favorite seat, to get situated, pull out all of the pens that I wanted in my highlighters, um, get, make sure that I had um, my notebook exactly where I wanted it. Um, to my fiance, being on time means getting there right on the dot. So you can imagine that if I want to be there 15 minutes early and he wants to be there right on time, that there's some conflict there. Um, don't worry. We have tons of things in our, um, uh, in our icebergs that connect over really beautiful things and make us you know, a great couple. But that's just one, uh, one dynamic about who we are uh, that is based on how we grew up our families and all the rest that cause tension. Thankfully, we have a lot of harmony too. I just tell us, oh, early people, there's some earlier, early people in the chat too. So um, reuse, revisit, reflect. Uh, that's for anything. If you do any um, relationship building throughout the year, make sure that you cycle back, circle back to it throughout the year. Um, First of all, you've used that time already at some point to do the groundwork. And now you're just building like layers and layers of Legos. I got my one little nugget of information from this Lego and I just wanna keep building on top of it. Um, so that's another benefit. One of the greatest ways to build community and culture is to develop a practice of gratitude. So I'd love for you to just think, you don't have to share it in the chat, you're just sharing it, reflecting um, for yourself, but who is someone that uh, deserves your gratitude and appreciation? Um, particularly someone who you might not get along well with, or you haven't talked to in a long time, or um, you, know, you felt like you missed the opportunity. Because here's the thing, gratitude does not expire or the opportunity to show gratitude does not expire. Um, I, I can't tell you how much I really, really love it when a student comes back to me and I get an email from them and they say, oh, you know, they give me an update on their lives and they tell me, oh, you were my favorite third grade teacher. I really loved X, Y, and Z. And I'm sure we have some teachers in the, in the space here who have received some messages from former students years after they've had them in the classroom. Um, and it works the same way with, the adults in your lives um, and your students. So who is someone who has impacted you this week um, who maybe you don't usually show gratitude with um, or for whom appreciation might be really long overdue? Um, two tips to up your appreciation game though is to develop a routine or practice around it. Um, I have in my calendar now Every Friday morning is half an hour that is blocked off for me to reflect along the week and to think about who I need to show some appreciation to. Um, so every week I send a message out to at least one person thanking them for um, something that they've helped me out with or um, for just being present with me if I needed an event session. Um, there have been a, a couple of times where I have reflected and I've written to um, you know, a family member that did something for me a long time ago, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to, to show gratitude. Um, so 
unless you make a routine out of it, it won't happen. You know, it's one of those things, right? Like it's why people count their calories or they, you know, schedule some me time every once in a while. Um, so, but if you continue to build the practice, build it into routine, um, the easier it is. And I'll tell you, it's a very, in terms of re reciprocity, it just feels good. It feels good for me, the individual, in a selfish way to give thanks to someone else, to show that, you know, I acknowledge that you played some part in my success here, or um, you helped me really get through a hard time. And I, you know, I wouldn't have made it through as I did without your words or your support. Um, the second tip is to make it easy. Uh, you'll see there on the right is a rectangle that says love in it. In our office, um, we have these notes. You can do it um, analog. They're posted all over the place. Um, you can get a whole stack of them. Um, now we have digital versions and that we can fill out. The love stands for living our values every day. So the idea is that we're passing along gratitude and appreciation for our colleagues for things that they've done for us. So um, if you could do that for your students or your colleagues, just make it easy. Here, just here's a nice, cute form to fill out or a note that you can fill out. Um, then the, the more you'll do it. Um, so we're at about the end of our time of these slides, at least. Um, you know, I started this off by saying we're going to bring a lot of joy, um, but the the truth of the matter is some of these questions, as I said, can bring out some, you know, pains. Um, and if we can be a community that where we share our pains, then the more we can enjoy our successes and our joy together. Um, so I don't know about you, but the people in my life who I go to and I can share the painful parts of my life with easiest are the people that I want to have the most fun with also and the ones I feel closest to. And so that's um, truly uh, the sense of community that I believe that we should all try to strive for um, with our adult colleagues and our young learners as well. So that wraps it up. Again, my name is Abby. You can reach me um, at this email address or at this handle on social media. Thank you so much, Abby. That was wonderful. I, I know that I'm going to echo all the comments that are about to like pop up in the chat. Here they come. Yeah. <laughs> um, just the tips that we can take these items and bring them right to our students is just absolutely invaluable. So thank you so much for being with us here today. And congratulations again on finishing your co coursework for your masters. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So what we're going to do now is we will pop the link um, for the discussion room in the chat. And please feel free to come and join us into that space. It'll be a traditional Zoom. So you'll have access to your audio and your video. Um, and we will just open up a space to ask questions um, or engage in a dialogue around getting to know, you know, the stories of the students in our classroom. So please, please feel free to join us. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you.